Unit 7. Independent. C. Listen and repeat. I live in Denver, Colorado. My city is located in the middle of America. It is very close to the Rocky Mountains. My city is famous for its beautiful mountains and incredible skiing. F. Listen to the sample responses and complete the outlines. Sample response 1. I love almost everything about my hometown, but I hate the weather there. The weather always limits me in what I can do. I like to go outside and be active. The problem is that it always seems to be raining, or it is windy or too cold. The weather often messes up my weekend plans. Last weekend, I was planning to go canoeing with some friends, but there was a huge storm, and I had to stay inside all weekend. You can change or avoid many things in a city, but you can't modify the weather. The weather in my city often ruins my plans. Sample response 2 The thing I dislike the most about my city are the terrible traffic jams. During rush hour, my commute home from work can take over an hour. Without traffic, it only takes 20 minutes to get to work. Sitting in traffic is really dull. I could leave earlier in the morning, but that would force me to get up too early. I really wish that the city officials would make resolving this problem a priority. Perhaps they could construct new roads so that the traffic could flow much smoother. It looks like I am going to be sitting in traffic every day for a while. Integrated B. Listen to the first part of a conversation. Then, answer the questions. So, do you think you will live on campus next year? I'm not sure. I was thinking of buying a car, and then I could continue to live on my parents' estate. Why would you want to do that? You would have much more freedom living on campus. That's true, but my parents are pretty good. I could still have fun and have my own car. C. Listen and repeat. The students are discussing if he should buy a car to get to university or stay on campus. The student says that his parents are good and that if he lives at home, he can still have fun and also buy a car. I think the rest of the conversation will be about why he should live on campus. I think he should stay on campus. A. Listen to the full conversation and take notes. So, do you think you will live on campus next year? I'm not sure. I was thinking of buying a car so I could continue to live on my parents' estate. Why? You would have more freedom living on campus. That's true, but my parents are pretty good. Plus, my older brother lives at home, and they like that. I think they would be upset if I deviated from what they think is normal. But there are other things. Like what? I want to enjoy university life. But it's intrinsic that I study hard. If I live on campus, there may be too many distractions. I also like the idea of having my own car. Well, you seem certain that staying at home and buying a car is the best option. Absolutely not. Living on campus sounds good too. If I live on campus, I will be closer to the university. I won't need to consider travel time. And I would be able to select my own room. At the moment, I have the smallest room. Plus, it will give you a different scope on being a student. What do you mean? You will have to be more independent. Your parents won't have breakfast waiting for you every morning. Yes, that's true. My parents couldn't tell me what to do. Also, my brother sometimes treats me like his subordinate, and that causes a lot of tension. What are the living standards on campus? They're tremendous. There is internet access in each room. There is also a gym, a new library, and the food is delicious. Well, what are you going to do? Both choices are great, but I don't know which I want more. D. Listen to the sample response and complete the outline. The conversation is about buying a car to get to university or staying on campus. The advantages of buying a car are that the student can continue to live on his parents' estate. His parents are good, so he can have fun and still have a car. 
He also likes the idea of having his own car to drive to wherever he wants to go. The students also discuss the advantages of living on campus. There will be no travel time living on campus. The student also thinks that the facilities on campus are tremendous. For example, there is internet access in all rooms, a gym, and a library. I think he should live on campus. He will have more time to study and great facilities. Step 1. Listen to the conversation and take notes. So, are you looking forward to university life? Absolutely. Except that I can't decide if I should live with my parents or on campus. What do your parents want you to do? My mom's very easygoing. She thinks that I should live on campus, but my dad would prefer that I live with them on the estate. I think that living on campus is an intrinsic part of student life. It's the ideal situation by far. I'm sure it's a great experience, but I don't know if it's that ideal. Living at home will be much cheaper, and the living standards are superior to a campus accommodation. I'm afraid I'll have to disagree with that. Campus accommodation has improved greatly. All rooms on campus now have wireless internet access. There is a laundry service, and you will have so much freedom. Plus, you don't have a car, and if you live at home, you will need to ride a bus to class. Yes, I know it will take up a tremendous amount of time traveling from home each day. Well, if you live on campus, you could use that extra time to get a part time job. I don't really plan to get a part time job. That's just a distraction. If I want to succeed, I will need to use all my free time to study. Don't forget to make time for fun, too. I won't. Thanks for your advice. It's good to get someone else's scope on things. Now I just need to select what will be the best for me. No problem. I'm sure you'll make the right decision. Unit 8 Independent C. Listen and repeat. My favorite food is lasagna. My mom makes this food best. My mom's lasagna is the best because she knows exactly all the things that I like in it. F. Listen to the sample responses and complete the outlines. Sample response 1. I think that it is much better to eat at home than it is to eat at restaurants. Eating at home makes all the family come together to have dinner. This can be used to spend precious time together as a family, thereby ensuring that everyone is intimately involved in each other's life. Eating out can also take a long time. Going to the restaurant, ordering, eating, and then coming home can take longer than expected. Children are busy with homework and other pursuits. Parents also have important errands and other chores to do at night. So I think eating at home is better. Sample response 2. I think it is better to eat dinner at restaurants. Eating at restaurants is much easier. There is no preparation both before and after the meal. A family just has to go and eat. The restaurant takes care of everything else. Restaurants can also cater to each member's specific tastes. Even a family member who is a very picky eater can usually find something on the menu that he or she likes. Going to restaurants allows everyone to eat exactly what they want. Because it is much less of a hassle, I think it is better to go to restaurants for dinner. Integrated B. Listen to the first part of a lecture, then answer the questions. Okay, class, imagine you are on an exquisite tropical island. You've packed your fins, mask, and snorkel. You go to explore the beautiful coral beneath the ocean, but instead you find that the coral is dead. This is occurring more and more often. It is because the Earth's oceans are becoming warmer, so coral bleaching is becoming more widespread. This prompts the question Can coral survive the bleaching? C. Listen and repeat. The lecture is mainly about coral. The coral is dying. I think the professor will talk about what is causing the coral to die. A. 
listen to the full lecture, and take notes. Okay, class, imagine you are on an exquisite tropical island. You've packed your fins, mask, and snorkel. You go to explore the beautiful coral beneath the ocean, but instead, you find that the coral is dead. This is occurring more and more often. It is because the Earth's oceans are becoming warmer, so coral bleaching is becoming more widespread. This prompts the question, can coral survive the bleaching? Coral is in fact animals. They depend on algae for food. The algae live within the coral. They give the coral its bright, beautiful colors. Over the past 100 years, sea temperatures have been rising and there are predictions that the temperatures will continue to rise. Rising water temperatures block the photosynthetic reaction that converts carbon dioxide into sugar. This results in a buildup of toxins. The toxins poison the algae and force the coral to reject it. As a result, the coral has no color. It is bleached white. Coral reefs are important to snorkelers and divers. They are also important for many other reasons. They are home to hundreds of thousands of marine life and fish. If the coral continues to die, some of the marine life may become extinct. The elimination of coral reefs would also result in other great losses. The income from tourism and fishing would go down. It may also hinder the discovery of new medicines. Coral bleaching is a natural process. However, it has been shown that stress caused by pollution and solar radiation can also result in coral bleaching. The coral can recover, but only if sea temperatures become cooler. D. Listen to the sample response and complete the outline. Coral reefs are dying more and more often. Sea temperatures are becoming warmer. Coral bleaching is more widespread. Coral depends on algae for food. The algae gives it its color. For over 100 years, sea temperatures have been rising. This causes a buildup of toxins and poisons the algae. Fish and marine life depend on the coral. They may become extinct. Coral is important to snorkelers. Tourism and fishing will be affected by coral bleaching. They will experience a loss of income. It may also hinder the discovery of new medicines. Pollution and solar radiation are dangerous to coral. Coral reefs are very important. It is important to save them. They can be recovered if sea temperatures become cooler. Test. Step 1. Listen to the lecture and take notes. For several years, there has been growing evidence that the global climate is steadily getting warmer. Some of the predicted effects are rising sea levels and melting of glaciers. This can have serious consequences. Warmer seas kill coral. Melting ice sheets also kill marine life in colder regions. Extinction of some animals is happening quicker than predicted. At least 70 species of frogs have become extinct. Other animals that depend on the cold may be eliminated too. Polar bears and seals are just two examples. They depend on sea ice for food and giving birth. Recently, polar bears have drowned. Polar bears can swim long distances. When they need to rest, they usually do so on sea ice. There was no sea ice, so the polar bear drowned, as it was too tired to swim farther. As the ice sheets melt, sea levels rise. This means that many beaches will be lost. Animals and birds living in the beach areas will also be in danger. People's homes will be destroyed. They will have to move and it will be very expensive. People living on islands will have less drinking water because of the sea salt. Millions of people will be affected. Rising sea levels and melting ice are natural. To reduce the impacts of climate change, we need to change our habits. We need to do this as soon as possible. The longer we wait, the less effective change will be.
Unit 9. Independent. C. Listen and repeat. My father is a TV broadcaster for sports games. The best part about my father's job is the free tickets to all the big games. I wouldn't be interested in a job like my father's because he has to travel a lot and doesn't get to spend a lot of time at home. F. Listen to the sample responses and complete the outlines. Sample response 1. I want a job that is challenging and stimulating. Jobs that are too easy and too routine become very mundane. A job is something that you need to do every day for a very long time. A boring job will lead to a boring life. People who really enjoy their jobs, though, don't view their job as work. They view their jobs as recreation. Jobs that are challenging let you feel as if you have accomplished something every day. They let you go home feeling proud and content with your day's work. A challenging and stimulating job is what I want to have. Sample response 2 I want a job where I have great colleagues. We all spend so much time at work. Because of this, it is very important to get along well with your colleagues. Good colleagues can make the time pass quickly because you are enjoying yourself at work. They are also incredibly dependable. This makes people work harder and achieve even more ambitious goals. When these goals are attained, there is a great sense of camaraderie and unity. This is shared by everyone who work together on the project. People without good colleagues often feel isolated. Great colleagues can make a job great. Integrated C. Listen and repeat. The university will increase tuition at the beginning of next year in order to pay for programs and facilities for new students. I think the conversation will be about the possible new programs and facilities. B. Listen to the conversation and take notes. I can't believe this. What is it? There's an announcement in the student newspaper. It's from the Dean of Students. The university has decided to increase tuition, and the increase is effective next year. Really? How much will the increase be? It says the maximum will be 3%. It seems small, but that's a substantial increase. That's terrible. Tuition is already too high for most students to afford. Why are they increasing it? Apparently, there hasn't been an increase in a really long time. With all the new students over the past few years, the university needs to update its facilities and programs. The article says that it will be good for all the students who study here. I think this is terrible. I almost couldn't pay my tuition this year. I had to get a job. I don't know how I'll pay more next year. I guess I'll have to work more hours at my part-time job. Yeah. I've already accumulated a lot of debt in university. Next year, my student loan will be even bigger. It will take me years to pay it back. I wonder if we can stop the increase. Maybe we should start a petition or something. I don't think that would work. It sounds like it's already been decided. I guess we'll have to figure something out. I might have to call my parents and ask for money. I really don't want to do that. This is awful. D. Listen to the sample response and complete the outline. The man thinks tuition is already too high. He couldn't afford to pay it this year, so he had to get a job. He doesn't know how he'll pay for the tuition increase. He will have to work more hours. As a result, he thinks the students should start a petition to stop the increase. Test Step 2 Listen to the conversation and take notes. Hi, what's that you're reading? You don't look very happy about it. It's a letter I received from the library about my overdue books. It says that I have to pay $25 or they won't give me my grade report. Really? That seems like a lot of money. I didn't know that the library's late fees were so expensive. Well, it says here that the fines were increased this year. I didn't even know they were thinking about raising the fines. Oh, I remember now. 
Last fall, there was a petition among the students about the library late fees. The increase in late fees was supposed to supply supplementary income for the new computers. Yes, that's it exactly. I think this is awful. It's so much money. I can't afford to pay all these fees. I think it's great. The extra money will really help make the new computer lab a good place to work. I strongly supported the petition because I want the new facilities to be up to date. But what about the students who have to pay the late fees? It's unfair to expect us to pay for the new computers. No, it isn't. I think it's unfair when students don't return library materials on time. If you have a book that I need and you return it late, I can't get my research done. As a result, my grades might be lower. You should be punished for disrespecting the other students. Well, I wish I had returned my books on time. Unit Ten. Independent. C. Listen and repeat. I think university students are very independent and hardworking. I think professors treat students like adults with a greater sense of camaraderie. The most important lesson to learn at university is how to take care of yourself. F. Listen to the sample responses and complete the outlines. Sample response one. I think that university students should not be obliged to go to class. The predominant purpose of college is to prepare students to be adults. Students need to be allowed to make decisions for themselves. Choosing to go to class is an important choice that students need to be given. In addition, many college classes are seminar classes. These have pre-made notes and large class sizes. They also have a teacher assistant lecturing. Students can get the notes from friends, and the teacher won't even notice. This is a waste of time. College students should not be obliged to go to class. Sample response two. I think that college students should be obliged to go to class. I acknowledge that they are adults and can make their own decisions, but after university they get jobs. Everyone is obliged to go to work every day. This is a good way to practice for the real world. More importantly, the ultimate goal of college is to get more knowledge. You learn by going to class. It also allows you to be a part of discourse with classmates. This can help to further your knowledge. College students should be obliged to go to class. Integrated. C. Listen and repeat. The microchip was invented in Silicon Valley. There are so many technology firms in Silicon Valley because modern technology is reliant upon the microchip. I think this lecture will be about how Silicon Valley started and what it is. B. Listen to the lecture and take notes. Today, when people hear the term Silicon Valley, they think of technology. Silicon Valley is not the name of an actual valley. It is a term used to define a region of Northern California. Silicon Valley sits on the southern part of San Francisco Bay. It is near the city of San Jose. Silicon Valley got its name from two places. One is from its location; the other is from what was invented there. The federal government used this area to test important technology after World War II. Stanford University also needed more space. It had too many students; they put them in the area. Two Stanford graduates named William Hewlett and David Packard then started a computer company there. This company became Hewlett Packard. It soon became the biggest computer company in the world. People also began working on the microchip at this time. They learned that microchips work best with silicon. Robert Noyce and Gordon Moore later started the company Intel. The microchip was a monumental invention. All technology now uses the microchip. The microchip attracted lots of smart people to the area. The area soon exploded with technology and commerce. Hundreds of new companies started to inhabit Silicon Valley.
These companies needed money. Venture capitalist firms began to set up in Silicon Valley. They put money into these companies. Many companies grew and grew. Lots of people got really rich. D. Listen to this sample response and complete the outline. The lecture and the passage were about Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley is located on the southern part of the San Francisco Bay. It got its name from two things. One was from its location, the other from what was invented there. Many Stanford graduates started businesses in this area. Two of them started a company called Hewlett Packard. It soon became the biggest computer company in the world. People were also working on the silicon microchip. This was a monumental invention. Robert Noyce and Gordon Moore used this invention to start the company Intel. Soon, companies quickly came because modern technology is reliant upon the microchip. Other companies set up. These companies needed money to grow. They got money from venture capitalists. People became really rich. Test. Step two. Listen to the lecture and take notes. Silicon Valley is still synonymous with the microchip. However, Silicon Valley is now also synonymous with other kinds of technology. Intel and Hewlett Packard were the original big technology firms, although later other huge technology firms began to inhabit Silicon Valley as well. The first and the second wave of technology was Apple. Apple was able to raise over one billion dollars from investors. This caused the venture capitalists to start their own investment companies. The 1990s saw the internet explode. Companies such as Netscape, Yahoo, Adobe, Cisco, and Oracle all led to a long period of growth. It was one of the greatest economic growth periods in history. E-commerce also started to grow. Companies like eBay, Google, and Verisign all started there. They allowed people to search for an item, buy that item, and pay for the item all on the internet. The success of these companies led to the American stock market becoming reliant upon Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley went through a difficult time in 2000. There were too many companies. This caused a huge decrease in their values. This caused a big decrease in the American stock market. Now Silicon Valley is doing well again. It continues to innovate and conduct commerce. It continues to be involved in technology, but it is also growing into medicine. Technology and medicine have combined. This will create the next great wave in Silicon Valley. No one knows which company will explode next. Unit Eleven. Independent. C. Listen and repeat. I have a lot of family and friends in my hometown. I think there aren't a lot of job opportunities because people always have to move to find a job. I think that my hometown is a great place to raise a family because it is very safe. F. Now listen to the sample responses and complete the outlines. Sample response one: I want to live close to where I grew up. If I move far away, it will be very hard to keep in touch with all my relatives. I couldn't cope with that. I would have to find a whole new set of peers in both my personal and professional life. My hometown is where my family heritage comes from. I'd be in solitude in a faraway city. My cousin moved to Europe. He lived there for five years, but moved back home. He said he missed his family and friends. The same thing would happen to me, so I'll live close to home. Sample response two. I want to live far away from home. There are so many new challenges for me in a more urban city. I am very resentful of people from my hometown still treating me like I am still a child. I want to live somewhere there are no preconceived ideas of who or what I am. Plus, with technology, it doesn't put a strain on my relationships with my friends and family. I can call them often. 
Two years ago, I moved to a new continent. I love it here and don't know when I will go back home. I like being far away from home. Integrated. B. Listen to the first part of a conversation. Then answer the questions. I can't decide if I should go to summer school or take my vacation time. Why would you go to summer school? You've worked hard all year and deserve the break. I know I do, but if I attend summer school, it will deduct a huge amount from my workload next year. Then, hopefully, I can graduate early. Don't you think that it's implicit that you have a break from studying? You will perform much better in the final exams if you take a vacation. C. Listen and repeat. The students are discussing if the man should go to summer school or take a vacation. The man says that summer school will decrease his workload next year, and then he can graduate early. I think the rest of the conversation will be about why he should take a vacation. A. Listen to the full conversation and take notes. I can't decide if I should go to summer school or take my vacation time. Why would you go to summer school? You've worked hard all year and deserve the break. I know I do, but if I attend summer school, it will deduct a huge amount from my workload next year. Then, hopefully, I can graduate early. Don't you think that it's implicit that you have a break from studying? You will perform much better in the final exams if you take a vacation. Maybe. I've spoken with the organizer of the summer school, and she told me that this year's panel of teachers are very energetic. I think they will make summer school enjoyable. More enjoyable than a vacation? Maybe not. But if I graduate from school early, then I can take a long vacation before I start university. That would be awesome. Would you take a trip? Well, My parents have a radical trip planned to Europe for next year. They've promised that I can go too if I graduate early. Wow! That will be a hard earned vacation. Don't you want to spend more time with your friends before we all go away to university? Sure, I do. It's probable that I can graduate early enough, whereby I can go to Europe and still spend time with my friends. Do you think it's possible that you can do it all? You're putting yourself under a lot of pressure. I sure hope so. I still have to decide what I will do. D. Listen to the sample response and complete the outline. The conversation is about whether the student should attend summer school or take a vacation. The student says that attending summer school will deduct from his workload next year. He may also be able to graduate early. If he graduates early, his parents have promised to take him on a radical trip to Europe. He thinks it's probable that he can graduate early, go to Europe, and still spend time with friends. However, there are advantages to taking a vacation. If you have been studying hard all year, it is implicit to take a break from studying in order to perform better in exams. It is also important to spend time with friends before school finishes and everyone goes away to university. I think he should take the vacation time and spend as much time with friends as possible. Test Step 1 Listen to the conversation and take notes. So, what did your parents want to talk to you about last night? They wanted to talk about my grades. My average is low, and they think it's implicit that I attend summer school during the vacation. But didn't you plan on getting a job? Yes, that's what I have been planning. I have a radical job lined up, working on a fruit farm. One of my friends is a great organizer. He has planned a road trip at the end of the summer, and I was going to save money to go with him. That would be a hard earned road trip. Do you know how difficult working on a farm is? I'm an energetic person. It would be great working outdoors in the summer. Beautiful blue skies, fresh air, and sunshine. You're right about that. But if your grades are low, maybe you should listen to your parents and go to summer school. It will really improve your chance of getting into a good university. I could really do with some extra studying. It's probable that I won't get any university offers with my current grades.
and you'll probably earn very little working on a fruit farm. I hear that they deduct money if you eat too much fruit. Oh, maybe I wouldn't save very much money. I have an awesome idea. Maybe you could make a deal with your parents, whereby you go to summer school and they pay for your road trip. That would be great, but I'm not sure that they'll go for it. Unit Twelve. Independent. C. Listen and repeat. My dad has had three different careers and has worked for about five or six different companies. He has worked at his current job for over eight years. F. Now listen to the sample responses and complete the outlines. Sample response one. I think people should try to change jobs frequently. The world is rapidly changing. Technology changes every day. Thus, it is critical that people have an extensive range of skills and experiences, so they are better able to adapt to the changing marketplace. The best way to attain these skills is through work. Working a wide range of jobs will help employees get the skills and experience that are needed. In a globalized marketplace, frequently changing jobs helps people to be more employable later on in life. Sample response two: It is better to stay at the same job for a long time. Staying at the same place allows you to have continuity and stability in your life. Other people might depend on your income. Having a good, stable job will ensure that you and your family won't feel a lot of stress. In addition, it allows you better chances for promotion. This will allow you to work at the same place, but it gets you a better job with more responsibility and more money. Staying at the same job for a long time is what I want to do. Integrated. B. Listen to the first part of a lecture, then answer the questions. Broadway is located in central Manhattan in the U.S. It was founded in the early 1900s. Since then, it has been the heart of commercial culture. In the beginning, the shows were funny. They provided light entertainment to people. They bore no resemblance to daily life. They attracted audiences interested in music, excitement, and romance. The audience often became involved in the shows. The orchestra has even been known to play to them after the shows. C. Listen and repeat. The lecture is mainly about the shows on Broadway. Broadway was founded in the early 1900s. I think the professor will talk about how Broadway has changed. A. Listen to the full lecture and take notes. Broadway is located in central Manhattan in the U.S. It was founded in the early 1900s. Since then, it has been the heart of commercial culture. In the beginning, the shows were funny. They provided light entertainment to people. They bore no resemblance to daily life. They attracted audiences interested in music, excitement, and romance. The audience often became involved in the shows. The orchestra has even been known to play to them after the shows. When World War One began, Broadway gave support to the soldiers. Theaters were built and were used to raise money for the war. After the war, Broadway changed. It began to deal more with social and political issues. Some shows highlighted the senselessness of war. During this time, Broadway reached its prime. The number of productions grew dramatically. It also became well known for its bright lights and crowds. A French novelist remarked, "In Forty Second Street, it is a glowing summer afternoon all night." The Great Depression hit the U.S. in the 1930s. Broadway, of course, took a fall too. The number of productions dropped. Many actors were put out of work. However, this seems to have been a creative time for writers. Interesting plays were written about the American state of affairs. Broadway has always responded to national crises and changes in society. Even though it could not compete with mass media, Broadway has always supported new ideas and continues to be an important aspect of American culture.
D. Listen to the sample response and complete the outline. Broadway was founded in the 1900s in Manhattan. In the beginning, shows provided light entertainment. The shows bore no resemblance to real life. Audiences enjoyed music, entertainment, and romance. They often became involved in the shows. The orchestra sometimes played to them after a show. During World War I, Broadway supported the soldiers. Theaters were built to raise money for the war. After the war, shows began to deal with social and political issues. Productions increased dramatically. The Great Depression hit in the 1930s. The number of productions fell. However, this was a creative time for writers. Interesting shows were written about the state of affairs in the U.S. Broadway always responded to changes in society. Mass media was too hard to compete with. Nonetheless, Broadway is still an important aspect of American culture. Test. Step 1. Listen to the lecture and take notes. New York is famous for many things. Broadway is just one of them. Broadway shows are popular with people of all ages. Anyone planning a trip to this city should check out the shows in advance. With so many Broadway musicals coming and going, it can be hard to choose which one to see. One of the longest running musicals on Broadway was Cats. It was composed by Andrew Lloyd Webber. The first show was in London. It has been performed all around the world and has been translated into many languages. It is about a tribe of cats. They meet once a year to choose a cat to be reborn. The actors perform so perfectly. They bear great resemblance to real cats. Another popular production is The Lion King. It is based on a Disney animated film. The musical tells the story of Simba, who is a lion. His father, Mufasa, is the Lion King. Simba will become king in the future. The story is about jealousy and evil. Mufasa dies while still in his prime, and Simba becomes king. Musicals often use animals as the characters. The stories are very entertaining. Usually, the stories are about social issues. The animals represent certain people in politics or the media at the time. The theater plays an important role in people's lives. Writers have the chance to express their views in a fun way. Sometimes the writers are lucky and their stories are told all around the world. Review 2 Integrated 1 Step 2 Listen to the lecture and take notes. Before the 19th century, very little Russian literature was read worldwide. In the 1830s, Russian literature underwent a radical change. It began with the poet Alexander Pushkin. It resulted in two of the most predominant novelists in world literature. They are Leo Tolstoy and Fyodor Dostoevsky. Russian literature is synonymous with suffering. Dostoevsky has been acknowledged for his use of suffering in his books. Crime and Punishment is a good example. This is about a poor student who is resentful of an evil pawnbroker. He plots to kill her for her money. He believes that he is doing a good act by killing her. He uses her money to resolve others' financial problems. He helps a girl who struggles to support her family after her parents' death. He falls in love with the girl and confesses his crime to her. She encourages him to confess to the police. He is sent to prison and she follows him and lives in the same city. The story is not really about his punishment, it is more about his guilt and how it affects him. He confesses to the murder towards the end of the story. He believes it will put an end to his feelings of solitude. In this story, the writer frequently deals with issues of modern concern. Murder, Guilt, love, and religion are common themes in this book. Crime and Punishment has been translated into many languages. It has also been made into a movie several times. It is without a doubt an intrinsic part of global literature.
Integrated 2. Step 1. Listen to the conversation and take notes. You look very happy. Do you have some good news? I sure do. I had a meeting with the dean today and he suggested that I should run for student president. Congratulations. But how will you be able to concentrate on your studies and run for president? It will be challenging for sure. But all students deviate from their studies at some stage. It's important to be involved in activities other than study. But study should be your number one priority. You will need to modify your schedule a lot to be able to study and run for president. I'm not obliged to run for it yet. The dean said that I am ambitious and would make a good president. I think I can cater well to the student needs, but I know that my own work cannot suffer because of it. I think you would make an excellent president, and there are definitely advantages to it. It will look great on your resume, and you will meet lots of exquisite people. That's true. I've heard that there is usually good camaraderie among the candidates, but that's not a good enough reason to run for president. Why would you like to be president? I think I can resolve some major issues for students. On campus facilities are subordinate to most other universities. It will take a lot of time and effort to resolve that issue. I know, and I need to decide if it would be better to concentrate on my own work. Good grades are critical to getting a good job, and I don't plan on a career in politics.